Hi guys, my name's Louise and I'm going to be doing my first video tutorial on Adobe Bridge version CS3 for the iMac. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Adobe Bridge is essentially a viewing platform for all your image files on your computer. In my opinion, it is the best one that you can get due to the fact that you can redefine your searches, you can assign profiles, you can rate them with star ratings and generally the whole overall workflow management system is just so much easier than messing about with thumbnails as you do in Windows or in Finder. So if we go down to our dock menu at the bottom, we can see here we have the Adobe Bridge CS3 logo. If we just click this to open it up. Okay, this is view number one. This is the generic box standard view that you will get as soon as you have installed Adobe Bridge. Um, first little thing to notice is these little icons down here. This is how you change your views. So you have view one, which is the default, and then you have view two, which they call horizontal film strip. And then you have three, which is your more detailed view, but we'll come back to them in a few minutes. Okay. So essentially what we have here is your main viewing platform here, which is a thumbnail version, which at the moment, because I've not selected anything, is just displaying my various hard drives. So first thing we'll do, just to get something up on the screen, is here we have our navigation window, which essentially is like your finder on a Mac, or like your, kind of like your start menu, or your my documents folder really. Essentially it lets you just navigate through your computer to find, locate your files. Down here, we have folders that the hard drive that is named, your desktop documents and pictures, these are automatically put here by Adobe. However, this one here, which I've just selected, this is one that I dragged and dropped from this navigation window and it essentially adds it as a favourite. So, here is how I manage my workflow. Um, as you can see, I love my organisation, therefore I separate everything into different folders and categories, i.e. abstract and object, architecture, archive retouching, canvases, creative filters, flowers, landscapes, macro, portraits, wildlife, weddings. You know, you get the kind of hint on it, I categorise it. How you manage your workflow is completely up to you though. So, let's just, for example, pick portfolio. And we'll take this image here. Okay, so you finally have navigated through, you've found your image or your folder. As soon as you select a folder, it'll automatically bring up in this view a list of thumbnails and your file names. So if you select any of these images, you can see at the right hand side of the screen, your preview window just over here changes. It will let you see a small preview, you can zoom in on it. It will also give you the file name down here, which is quite handy. Now, for all of the photography buffs out there, um, this is where you get to view your metadata template. Those of you who don't understand what metadata is, don't worry, I will come back to that shortly in another tutorial. So here, for those who don't, do know what metadata is, you can view your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, your light metering mode, your file size, color profile, um, your resolution, your PPI, your file name, file type, date shot, actual dimensions of the file um, and down here you can actually view any custom metadata that you have put in through a template or through file info. You can also see how your focus and exposure and everything was done and any of your camera raw details that are there if you happen to shoot in camera raw. So this is your main detailed information panel here. If you click this little one here, keywords, this is what brings you into the some of the um, other advantages to Bridge is the fact that you can assign keywords to each file so that it's easier to search for. So these are just the custom um, keywords that I have assigned to this because it was for a project. Um, Adobe automatically put in these subcategories here, events, people and places. If I decide that this was shot in New York and I wanted to assign New York to it, all I would simply do is just click and check the box. And as you can see, New York has been inserted there. 
it's been a mistake, all you simply do is just click again to uncheck and it's gone. And just click back here to get back to your metadata. So, as I said, up here we've got the navigation and the favourites. Here we also have a list of all of the keywords that's used in general for um, my college folder. You can redefine by just looking for certain keywords just by clicking and it will display only those images that have been assigned that keyword. You can also search by rating. I don't generally tend to use ratings, hence why I've only got two with four stars, or five stars even, can't count this evening, and then the ones that aren't rated. If you happen to know that you're looking for the shot of your niece or nephew down at the beach and it was on the 15th of the 11th, then all you have to do is just click the 15th of the 11th and it will show you the files that were taken on that day. So essentially this just lets you redefine your search and narrow down very quickly what you're actually looking for. So, um, one more thing about this main view panel is that this little handy slider down here at the bottom of the screen, you can use this to increase or decrease the thumbnail size of your images to whatever suits. So I think that's that for that view. So if we go back down here to the little menu I said before, just these little buttons, and if we click on to number two, which is horizontal film strip, as you can see, the screen changes by quite a bit. Again, these thumbnails can be increased or decreased by this handy slider menu. In this view, I tend to put it down as small as possible for my thumbnails so I can still get my file names in and so I can get a larger image just to check that it's not pixelated and check what exposure is like. So obviously this is your main preview here and to be honest absolutely nothing else changes apart from you lose the metadata at the side. You do still have your keywords and your redefining stuff over here. So last but no means least we also have the metadata focus. This I love for when I'm sending images off to print. This again changes your main viewing panel here. It gives you your thumbnails, which, you've guessed it, yet again, can be increased or decreased depending on personal preference. It lists them by file name, and it also gives you all of your details about date created, the file name, date modified, file size, document type. Again, you're lucky enough to get your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, and even your focal length. You can also get the colour profile that's assigned the resolution and the PPI and any custom metadata that you have put into the file. I only put metadata into 72 PPI files, that's why it's not on all of them. Um, you can also see over here that your keywords menu has been brought back up, it's basically just been shifted and you still have all of your metadata over here. So essentially that is it for Adobe Bridge just for the basics. Um, Next tutorial is how to create a metadata template. Thanks guys.